Okay, so uh, week five, we're in week five, so now we're on the, the downhill, so to speak, for this class. Week five is all about polynomials. So this week is, so we did graphing with functions last week, and we're going to be doing a lot of graphing this week, um, and a lot of factoring, a lot of solving. Um, so factoring, I mean, the, the same things we've been doing, basically. You're just going to be doing more of it. So we're going through everything in chapter three. Uh, chapter three or section 3.1 is quadratic functions and models. So we've seen quadratics before in section 1.4 and 1.5 where um, you learn the quadratic formula, you were solving quadratic equations, and then in 1.5 we had complex numbers and did some stuff with quadratics. So 3.1 is showing what those look like when you graph them, basically. So a lot of what you're doing in 3.1 you've done already is just adding in what it means graphically. Your discussion this week is entirely based off of 1.4 and 3.1. That's all you need to do the discussion. So if you can get through 3.1 pretty quickly and then review 1.4, you should be good for the discussion. 3.2 talks about polynomial functions in general at a higher degrees. So that's cubics, um, cortex, which are degree four. Quintic is degree five. I have no idea what the names are after that. Um, that section is all about properties, what they look like when you graph them, how to tell what the shape is going to be, that sort of thing. So it's really based on the graph of these things and what that graph is. 3.3 talks about polynomial and synthetic division. So polynomial division is basically long division of polynomials. And then synthetic division is a shortcut for that and it, the synthetic division is great because it's used for more than just division. So that's a really important section, and that one is hard to learn from the textbook, especially synthetic division. It makes more sense when you see it worked out. So I'm doing a live session on that. 3.4 zeros of polynomial functions. So we've seen the word zeros before. Zeros are the x-intercepts. Um, zeros can have complex numbers, x-intercepts don't include complex numbers, so that's really the only difference between those two terms is whether you're including the imaginary numbers or not. Um, but that section is all about zeros, how to find them, what they mean. There's going to be tons of factoring in that section. And then 3.5 is mathematical modeling and variation, so that's the word problem section. So um, polynomials actually show up a lot of business, a lot of business predictions. So, you know, in week two, we did that prediction of a company and we did a straight line. Well, companies are not straight lines. They go up and they go down. So you can use polynomials to model those because polynomials go up and down. So polynomials are used a lot more in business for models and trying to predict what that's going to look like or to fit current data and to use that as a model. Um, there are some examples of polynomials, um, I know they talk about break-even points. I think that talked about a little bit of that in 1.4 as well. Uh, quadratics come up a lot in real life, so our discussion is going to be talking about real life application of quadratic equations. So polynomials are pretty important going forward, especially when you get to calculus. Everything is basically you do almost everything you do in calculus is based off of polynomial. So really important week. And a lot of it is graphing, so keep your Desmos handy. So lots of sections are needed to understand this week, so that's why, you know, it's chapter three. We got to get through everything first, but the most important things you need to know is how to solve a linear equation for x, how to solve a quadratic equation, how to factor, and graphing. Those are the four big things that you need to do. And if you can do those things, this week should be just fine for you. If you're still, you know, struggling on factoring or solving quadratic equations, then you might want to, you know, continue practicing those skills because being able to do those will help you a lot. The other thing this week is you really need to know definitions because um, there's going to be a lot of definitions. So I recommend making flashcards, really learning the definitions because, and there's lots of theorems. It's very wordy week as far as notes go. So um, I guess I could put down as important skills as understanding definitions. <laughs> but this is definitely a flashcard heavy week. 
So this week you've got your discussion, the practice assignment, the assignment, the quiz, you know, standard fare. So your discussion, I just said that the discussion is math based, just like last week's discussion. So this is another one where you need to show your math, show your work. And this is a uh, going to be modeled off of sports, basically. So back in, was it week two? No, it was week three. If you remember back in the week three assignment, there was that question about the position equation. We are revisiting that, um, that question, basically. So week three, you can go back and review it. It was giving you the position equation, and then you had to plug numbers into it. Well, this week, we are actually going to take that equation and do stuff with it. So um, in context of this problem, the equation is also known as a projectile equation rather than just position equation. It's sometimes called... Um, the vertical motion equation, if you're in physics, because there's um, projectiles, there's a vertical motion and horizontal motion of a projectile. So we're going to be using this equation to model the vertical height of the baseball. So we're going to use real data. So first you're going to pretend that you are playing baseball, so you want to figure out how high you're going to hit that baseball off a of baseball bat. So I think it's usually about shoulder height, so you'll need to figure out what your shoulder height is in and then you're going to look up the exit velocity of a baseball player. So MLB.com has this. I'm going to actually click on this so you can view the – yes, I want to open that up an edge. View the list. So um, baseball is all about math and statistics. I mean, the, the whole movie Moneyball is all about that. So – this shouldn't take so I don't know why it's not. Maybe if I close all these other tabs. There it goes. It's loading. Okay. So exit velocity. That is the speed of the baseball. So when these are all batters, when they hit the baseball, the exit velocity is how fast it's going for, well, after it's been hit basically their speed off the bat. So this is their average exit velocity, and then it gives some information like the launch angle, the angle at which they usually shoot it, um, the height and feet, the distance, all that information. So we're going to use our position equation. You're going to take your height, your, basically about where you think you're going to be hitting the baseball, and then you're going to be picking a player and use their average velocity, their exit velocity. So you can pick your favorite player, whoever you want, and you can pick their number. Um, their number is in miles per hour. The position equation is in feet per second. So you will have to convert that to feet per second. And you can do that with Google. So if I just go to Google, Google's amazing. And a lot of them are 94 uh, miles per hour. So I could say convert... 94 miles per hour to feet per second, and just hit enter. There it goes. So this will be your v-notch. Initial velocity would be the feet per second number. So you have your height in feet, your speed in feet per second. Um, so those are, and then you're going to put those numbers into the equation. And then you're going to use the techniques from 3.1, to find the maximum height, which is called the vertex, and then to find how long it will take for the ball to hit the ground. Basically, if it doesn't get caught, how long, what, what is, how many seconds do you have, basically, before it hits the ground? So we're going to be using this equation to figure that out. Now, this equation assumes that the ball is shot up almost perfectly vertically. So, like, you know, if a batter hits a ball and sometimes it's a fly ball and it just goes straight up or goes a little bit behind him, that's what this discussion, this equation is assuming. So this equation is not taking into account the angle. So that's the then part three is do you, how do you think the angle will affect these numbers? Do you think it's going to make the height lower? Will it change how long it will take to, you know, hit the ground? That sort of thing. So we're using a real equation. This position equation is an equation that you see in physics, so this is a real-life equation, and we're using it with real data to model a baseball. So 
you're going through a lot of math here and then you're showing your work. I have an example that I'm going to post later in the week about fireworks. So because fireworks are shot up basically straight up, you can use this equation to figure out how high a firework will go as long as you know the speed of the firework. And it's accurate. Like I, there's actually, I got data from a website where it shows the height and the speed of fireworks and then I put it in the equation and it's accurate. You get the same numbers. Like this is a real life equation that these things actually follow these, this equation. So that's the really cool thing. And it takes gravity into account. Um, that negative 16 part is half of gravity, the speed of gravity, the acceleration of gravity. So gravity is part of this equation already. It takes all of that into account. So that's the discussion prompt. As long as you follow my steps here, convert exit velocity speed per seconds, plug in your values, you know, follow all these steps, you should be fine because it's just a step by step. It's just a matter of understanding what you need to do um, and understanding the language. So like the maximum height to find the vertex, that's from 3.1. To find the zeros, that's solving a quadratic equation, so you need to use the quadratic formula. So it's all about understanding what these things mean and how you do that. So it should be an interesting discussion prompt. I think it's actually probably going to be easier than the cab one because I'm giving you the equation. So instead of like the, the taxi or the Uber, you had to create the equation. Here it's basically given to you. You just have to figure out the numbers. And then it's just a matter of working out the math. So moving on to the assignments. Your ungraded practice assignment are the end of chapter review exercises. So of course, do those for extra practice. What I would recommend doing is taking a look at the assignment questions and then trying to find questions that are similar from the review exercises. So that way you can get some practice. Um, the assignment itself is 10 problems. Um, this, the assignment this week is a little different than most of them actually. Let me pull it up. Let's see, do I still have... Yeah, well, let me pull up the assignment because the assignment this week has to be done in order. So problem one, everything in problem one has to be done in order because you use some of the work from the first parts in order to get the next parts. And so problem one, all about you have a polynomial and you're analyzing it. You're analyzing all the properties of it you're finding the zeros, you're using all of the definitions and the rules that, you're taught, that you learned this week. So it's basically taking everything we've done that we're going to do this week and putting them in one problem. So you have to do that one in order. So just as an FYI when you, um, so I would maybe print this out and then as you go through the notes or you go through the reading, these will all be in order, so you look for where you talk about the degree. Okay, turning points, look for that in the notes, all of that sort of thing. Um, so that's the week five assignment. Of course, show your work. Yes, I allow resubmissions. Yes, I will take photos or scans. Uh, just try to make them in one file. I uh, learned another app if you don't like cam scanner there's one called genius scan so you can try that one if you're having trouble with cam scanner um, you can try a different phone app to scan these if you did them by paper um, but that's basically it for the assignment and then the quiz this week so we just had week before we had the midterm and on the midterm there was nothing about functions the quiz is about functions. So um, just as an FYI, just a reminder, you're going to get a zero on the Dropbox when you turn in your work because those points are added to the quiz. So the zero in the Dropbox is expected. You want to pay attention to how the quiz score changes. So it's all about functions. You're going to be uh, quizzed on function notation, function combinations, and compositions. Analyzing functions, specifically finding the domain and finding the zeros. And those zeros, they're popping up every single week, basically. 
So we did zeros in last week. We're doing zeros again this week. You're going to be doing zeros in week six. You're going to talk about zeros in week seven. That Knowing that term, that's going to pop up every single week. Um, other topics covered are graphing functions, function transformations. So I recommend using a graph to help you out with those, those questions. Mathematical models and inverse functions. So those are all the things that you're going to want to study. Those are the kinds of things that were on the, the assignment, of course. So, um, and of course, you can look for extra problems in the textbook. All the odds have solutions so that can help you out with studying. And I know a lot of people still struggle with functions. So if you're still struggling with functions and you want a one on one, let me know and we can schedule a one on one and kind of help you understand the concept of a function before you take the quiz if you're still struggling with that. So schedule, how I suggest you do all of these things. Let me zoom in. <laughs> so let's start with the discussion. You can start working on the discussion today because you can pick your player, you can figure out the height, you can do all that. And you even know how to do the quadratic formula already, so you can even find the zeros today if you want because that is just from 1.4. Otherwise, you can wait for finishing 3.1 and to do the vertex and the zeros. And there is an example in the textbook talking about both of those things. So there are examples in 3.1 that go through finding the vertex and go through finding the zeros. And so you can have the discussion prompt done early enough that there's plenty of time to get feedback and to get help on finding your and that sort of thing. Um, got the videos, suggested review problems. So on the assignment, I said it has to be done in order. So the first question on the assignment, 1A, is actually vocabulary from P.3 when we learned about polynomials. So if you don't remember that, you can go back to P.3. And then B, C, and D, all of that vocabulary is found in section 3.2. Then you learn about synthetic division. And then the rest of problem one you learn how to do in 3.4. So when you get to 3.4, I recommend kind of working on the assignment at the same time. Then problem two goes with 3.5. Um, so that's sort of how this works out. So you, it's not really, not everything. You need 3.3 to do 3.4. So that's why there's kind of these gaps like this. And then, of course, some suggestions on how to study for the quiz, review your week four assignment. You can take the chapter two pre and post tests, take the chapter two test, that sort of thing. So that is uh, basically it. That's the plan for the week. Are there any questions? Well, if you don't have any questions, of course, you're welcome to email me. You might have once when you're studying. Yeah, yeah. The, when you're done studying, if you have questions, of course, you're able to reach out to me. Um, live session schedule. Let me, I know I have one tomorrow night. Let's see. Oh, nope, tomorrow night is my other classes. <laughs> I forgot about that one. Um, so if you do feel like it, Tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, I have one for the MA104 class on factoring out the greatest common factor. So that would be review for you. So if you want to attend that one and get practice on factoring the GCF, you can email me and I'll send you the link to that one because they have a separate link. Um, and then let's see, oh, Friday is when I'm doing, no, yeah, Friday at 1 p.m. I'm going to do polynomial and synthetic division because synthetic division you have to visually see for it to really make sense. So I'm going to go through that on Friday. Then Sunday, um, I will have a session at noon on zeros of polynomials, going through all of those rules that you need that go with 3.4. And that session is basically going to sort of walk you through the assignment. So if you attend that session, that will give you a good base 
for the whole assignment to help you through that. So I definitely recommend attending that one. Um, and then that's all I've got for you guys. But I have another session for the fundamentals class, the 104 at 6 p.m. on Saturday or on Monday on factoring. So again, if you need more factoring practice or if you need practice on factoring, email me and I can give you the link to that one. Um, and that's all I've got as far as live sessions go this week. And then, of course, next Wednesday will be week six. So, yeah, if you want to join in, actually, let me give you the link right now. Let me. Their link is, it's a bit.ly link just like I have. It's almost exactly the same. Oh, of course, I got to log in. Um, what is my password? <laughs> I don't remember. Oh, I can log in with Google. I think that's what I used to sign up to Bitly because I did not, I don't remember what my password is. Yes. Okay. Um, yes. So, okay. I'm putting it in the chat box. That is the link to the 6 p.m. Monday one. If you, that one for factoring, I'm going to be going over the AC method, which is also factoring by grouping. Um, that's the method when you have a number in front of your trinomial, you know, if you have like three X squared plus something. So that's what I'm going to be doing on Monday. So that's really, if you're really struggling with factoring, that's the one that you really need to go to is that one on Monday. Um, yeah. So there's the, yeah, <laughs> it's just like a lot of people, it's like, ah, oh, those numbers, how do I do this? So yeah. So that's at 6 PM and then seven o'clock PM. I, of course I have my office hours on Monday. So uh, yeah, trinomial factoring trinomials is a lot of guessing, but there's sort of smart guessing you can do. Otherwise, the AC method that I'm going to show on Monday to the 104 students, that is, it's still guessing, but it's not as much guessing. And then you can kind of, there's a way to see if you did it right, because there's, if, if, if it doesn't, if your grouping doesn't match, then you know you guessed wrong, basically. So it's a little more organized and not as much guessing. So that should definitely help out. And of course, then that will be on YouTube and everything. Um, and I'll probably link to that as well. Just link from my own YouTube videos as additional resources. But um, yeah, I think that's it. Do you have any other questions for me? Yeah, factories trial and error. If you, if you do enough factoring, like I've been doing factoring for so many years that I can look at it and I can just factor it instantly because you tend to see the same things over and over again. But without that practice, you're, it's not there. <laughs> but no more questions. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that you were here, actor, so that I'm not just talking to myself because sometimes that gets boring and it's fun. So, all right. Um, I guess I will pop, stop the recording, pop off. Of course, I'm probably going to relax the rest of the evening. So I'll put this video out tomorrow morning. Um, but yeah, if you have questions, of course, reach out to me. So I hope you have a great evening. Make sure you relax. Maybe go to bed early because you said you were tired. I'm certainly going to make sure I go to bed early <laughs> since I said I was tired. Yeah. And uh, hopefully I will be all refreshed tomorrow. <laughs>